subclass, or maybe currently you might not have any reason to put code in there, but you'll definitely find a reason in the future to want to put some custom code that changes or augments the way that ADS uh, business components behave. And so it's good insurance policy to set that up ahead of time. In the case of Oracle Apps, they have many layers of these uh, classes. So there's a, a base one that all teams and applications use. There's another one that might be like, you know, all for the CRM applications. And then each team wants their own insurance layer. So there could be several layers of these framework extension classes. And this was the dialogue in the settings where you tell us which base classes you'd like to use. And then our design time will set up your code generation and XML to use those. Another trick that I've seen uh, many teams requiring is to make programmatic changes to a view criteria just before the query ex executes. So they might look at some of the values that are there or not there in the query, and then they want to add a few extra things into the view criteria before it actually hits the database. Um, and so the right method to override to accomplish that is the method called get criteria clause um, that has the Boolean argument. And uh, you can modify the view criteria, add view criteria items, do whatever you need before calling the superclass, and it will then run with your augmented view criteria. That could be some security thing you add. It could, could be a number of interesting use cases that you do. This is an important one. Um, this is something that will bite you when you go production if you haven't uh, heeded this advice, which is that uh, if, if you are running your application with just a few users, your application module pool will not be under load. Uh, our optimization of always giving the user back the same app module they used the last time will work correctly, and everything will just appear to work great. As soon as you start running with like 100 simultaneous users, and suddenly your pool can't grow anymore, and we need to use one user's app module to service another request, we need to start passivating and activating pending transaction state. And it's at that moment that uh, fields that you added to your view object that you were tracking some extra information in, those will suddenly be null, and your code will throw null pointer exceptions because they weren't properly passivated into that XML snapshot. So there's chapters uh, in the documentation that explain how to override the passivate state and activate state. You use a little bit of DOM XML programming to insert attributes or elements that will hold your custom information. And then you do the reverse of that. When it's activated, you take them out of the XML and put them back in your view object method. And then under any stress, it will work. By turning off this property in your app module pooling, by disabling in this checkbox, enable app module pooling, when it's off, activation and passivation will happen on every single request. It's like a total stress test of your app. And you'll immediately find the problem because your code will hit null pointer in like the first click or whatever your code might be depending on. Another tip is that we previously were not able to use JDBC data sources uh, except inside the web container, the, the J2EE web server. So your web app could use it, but your JUnit tests couldn't use it or your tester couldn't use it. Um, so now we implemented support for the data sources to work both in the tester as well as any kind of simple Java use case, so JUnit or running a command line utility or what have you. So we recommend uh, using the data source. I'm working to try to get that to be the default that the design time uh, uses, but some of our developers were concerned that changing that in the middle might confuse people. So <coughs> know that it works now, starting in the 11G release one, and uh, start using it in your apps. And if you decide against using data sources, this is something you probably want to disable. In your application properties, on the deployment tab, there's a checkbox that will be automatically generating data sources for you based on the connections you've created in the re app resources. And so it's quietly there creating JDBC data sources that will be not used by your app because your app is, if you've chosen not to use data sources, I'm not sure if it actually like spins up the data source and gets any connections in it, but if it does, then you're wasting connections as well as a little bit of resources. So if you choose not to use data sources, disable this property so you don't generate an unused data source. So now in uh, 11G, it's possible with 
the view criteria feature to create uh, one view object that has many named filters. And uh, before in 10.1.3, you would have had to create separate view objects, which often only differed by their where clause. And so what that would do is would mean that you'd work with the structure of some row, and rather than